Hey there, guys. Um, getting some work done in the classroom. I thought, well, let's do a read aloud from the classroom today. Kind of miss that. It's still quiet, though. I'm used to having kids around listen to the story. <laughs> do what we can do, though. <clears throat> so this is uh, a really good author, one of my favorites, uh, an illustrator, uh, Patricia Polacco. Um, this one is titled Thunder Cake. Kind of a strange sounding name. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the dust jacket so it doesn't fall off while I'm reading it. Let's sit over here. <clears throat> On a sultry summer day at my grandma's farm in Michigan, the air gets damp and heavy. Storm clouds drift low over the fields. Birds fly close to the ground. The clouds glow for an instant with a sharp, crackling light, and then a roaring, low, tumbling sound of thunder makes the windows shudder in their panes. The sound used to scare me when I was little. I loved to go to Grandma's house. Babushka, as I used to call my grandma, had come from Russia years before. But I feared Michigan's summer storms. I feared the sound of thunder more than anything. I always hid under the bed when the storm moved near the farmhouse. This is the story of how my grandma, my babushka, helped me overcome my fear of thunderstorms. This is a true story, nonfiction. <clears throat> grandma looked at the horizon drew a deep breath and said, Hmm, this is thunder cake baking weather, all right. Looks like a storm coming to me. Aren't grandmas awesome? They are. They're just like one of the best things. Child, you come out from under that bed. It's only thunder you're hearing, my grandma said. If you see your feet. The air was hot and damp. A loud clap of thunder shook the house, rattled the windows, and made me grab her close. Steady, child, she cooed. Unless you let go of me, we won't be able to make a thunder cake today. Thunder cake? I stammered as I hugged her even closer. Don't pay attention to that old thunder, except to see how close the storm is getting. When you see the lightning, start counting real slow. When you hear the thunder, stop counting. That number is how many miles the storm, the way the storm is, understand? She asked. We need to know how far away the storm is so that we have time to make the cake and get into the, get it into the oven before the storm comes or it won't be real thunder cake. Okay, so you see the flash and then you start counting. One, two, three, and then you stop counting when you hear the thunder. And then the next time it happens, if you get, if you don't get as far when you're counting, that means the storm is coming towards you. It's getting closer. If each time you count, you count higher, that means the storm's moving away. It's getting farther away. <clears throat> Her eyes surveyed the black clouds away off in the distance. Then she strode into the kitchen. Her worn hands pulled a thick book from the shelf above the wood stove. Let's find that recipe, child, she crowed as she lovingly fingered the grease-stained pages to a creased spot. Ah, here it is, thunder cake. She carefully penned the ingredients on a piece of notepaper. Now let's gather all the things we'll need she exclaimed as she scurried toward the back door. <clears throat> we were at the barn door when a huge bolt of lightning flashed. I started counting like Grandma told me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then the thunder roared. 
10 miles, it's 10 miles away, Grandma said as she looked at the sky. About an hour, I'd say. You'll have to hurry, child, grandmother. Gather them eggs, careful like, she said. Eggs from mean old Nellie Peckin. I was scared. I knew she would try to peck me. I'm here, she won't hurt you. Just get them eggs, Grandma said softly. The lightning flashed again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I counted. Nine miles, Grandma reminded me. <clears throat> milk was next. Milk from old Kick Cow. As Grandma milked her, Kick Cow turned and looked mean right at me. I was scared. She looked so big. Zip went the lightning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I counted. Boom went the thunder. Eight miles, child, Grandma croaked. Now we have to get chocolate and sugar and flour from the dry shed. Would you be afraid of that cow? Cows are pretty big. Another jagged edge of lightning flashed as I crept into the dry shed. One, two, three, four, five, six, I counted. Crackle, crackle, boom, kaboom, the thunder bellowed. It was dark and I was scared. I'm here, child, Grandma said softly from the doorway. Hurry now, we haven't got much time. We've got everything but the secret ingredient. I always love recipes that have a secret ingredient. Three overripe tomatoes and some strawberries, Grandma whispered as she squinted at the list. I climbed up high on the trellis. The ground looked a long way down and I was scared. I'm here, child, she said. Her voice was steady and soft. You won't fall. I reached three luscious tomatoes while she picked strawberries. Lightning again. One, two, three, four, five. Kabang! Boom! The thunder growled. We hurried back to the house in the warm kitchen, and we measured the ingredients. I poured them into a mixing bowl while Grandma mixed. I churned butter for the frosting and melted chocolate. Finally, we poured the batter into the cake pans and put them into the oven together. <coughs> uh, sounds like thunder right there. Lightning lit the kitchen. I only counted to three, and the thunder rumbled and crashed. Three miles away, Grandma said, and the cake is in the oven. We made it. We'll have real thunder cake. As we waited for the cake, Grandma looked out of the window for a long time. Why, you aren't afraid of thunder. You're too brave, she said as she looked right at me. I'm not brave, Grandma. I said, I was under the bed, remember? But you got out from under the bed, she answered. And you got eggs from mean old Nellie Peckin. And you got milk from old Kick Cow. You went through Tangleweed Woods to the dry shed. You climbed the trellis in the barnyard. From where I sit, only a very brave person could have done all them things. She's pretty brave. <clears throat> I thought and thought as the storm rumbled closer. She was right. I was brave. Brave people can't be afraid of a sound child, she said, as we spread out the tablecloth and set the table. When we were done, we hurried into the kitchen to take the cake out of the oven. After the cake had cooled, we frosted it.
Just then, the lightning flashed, and this time it lit the whole sky. Even before the last flash had faded, the thunder roared, boomed, crashed, and broomed just above us. The storm was here. Perfect, Grandma cooed. Just perfect. She beamed as she added the last strawberry to the glistening chocolate frosting on top of the thunder cake. I have to say, that looks really good. Do you like chocolate cake? Mm. <clears throat> As rain poured down on our roof, Grandma cut a wedge for each of us. She poured us steaming cups of tea from the, sam from the samovar. When the thunder roared above us so hard it shook the windows and rattled the dishes in the cupboard, we just smiled and ate our thunder cake. From that time on, I never feared the voice of thunder again. And this is cool. It actually has the recipe. So if you're looking for a recipe, this is how you do thunder cake. So I'll hold it right there for a few seconds. All right. If anybody makes some thunder cake, let me know how it is. Sure sounds good. All right, guys. See you tomorrow.